On this special edition of the AFN Naples Report, sailors push themselves physically and mentally as they transition to the rank of Chief Petty Officer. Those stories and more. Your station, your stories. The AFN Naples Report starts now. These anchors will help guide you and bring you and your sailors home. More will be expected of you, more will be demanded of you. Your entire way of life has changed. Welcome to this special edition of the AFN Naples Report. I'm Petty Officer Elizabeth Frey. Each new rank in the Navy comes with certain responsibilities and expectations. Sailors on the path to the GOAT Locker discover that earning their anchors may be the most rewarding experience in their careers. But before wearing the anchor, CPO selectees must learn the importance of their new rank. Air Force Sergeant Joseph Vigil explains. As dawn breaks and the colors are raised, these Chief Petty Officer selectees head to the classroom to learn what it means to be a chief. Well, to me, being a chief means setting the example. Chief Select Construction Electrician Gerald Mabrito is learning who chiefs set the example for. The people around you, not only the people that work for you, but uh, everybody that you see, everybody that you meet. You're the one who should be setting the standards. These future chiefs learn from and follow the examples from chiefs that came before them. The chief Petty Officers in the Navy uh, we're a very diverse group. We come from the submarines, we come from the air community, we come from the surface community. So that's one thing that we try to do is put all those diverse people together so that we can have a, a good strong group of leadership. These selectees intend to take what they've learned from the CPO Academy and implement it to become examples of leadership. Staff Sergeant Joseph Vigil, Naples, Italy. Learning what it takes to be a better leader is an important lesson, but learning how to apply these skills can be even more valuable. Important battles of our past are a good way to understand how influential leaders applied these skills to their mission. Air Force Sergeant Joseph Vigil follows the CPO selectees as they learn about the Battle of Monte Cassino. Motivation, determination, communication, these are just some of the lessons that CPO selects learn as they follow the footsteps of past leaders leaders who made critical decisions during the Battle of Monte Cassino. It's important to learn about the military heritage. Chief Areographer's mate Dean Tunsberg instructs the selects about each battle scene and the lessons that can be learned from them. It gives them you know, the aspect of World War II, the history, and also leadership as well. The leadership problems that they faced back then and how that ties into leadership today in the military and specifically in how it ties into being a chief petty officer. Very small. There's a river back there. Throughout each battle, they learn that leading troops through impossible situations is not an easy decision to make. To take some leverage off of uh, Anzio itself. It doesn't matter if you're on the ground in Afghanistan or on a ship or every decision you have to think about the, the, the following, kind of like the butterfly effect that's going to happen. You got to have uh, determination and keep your, your troops motivated. Uh, to carry out the vision and carry out the mission, even though you know things may be going downhill, but you got to keep everybody motivated to carry out your mission. Because he believed that the Germans were using it as a fortified position. Um, he tried Each to CPO select started as an individual, but along the journey from Hangman's Hill to the Polish Monument to the Monte Cassino Abbey, they came together as a team of future chiefs with a message for those who follow. Work together as a team. Um, you know, rely on each other, really, truly sit down and get to know each other and, and know that we're part of a very big, strong team and stick together. Air Force Sergeant Joseph Vigil, Naples, Italy. The definition of a team and a family are so similar that some might even say they are exactly the same. They're both a number of persons joined together who share common goals, values, and commitments. They motivate and encourage each other along the way. This family of CPO selectees join other families in the community for this year's Family Mud Run. For some, it was about more than just good, clean family fun. It was actually my first 5K, so it was a great accomplishment for me especially being able to go around as a group. The 2010 chief selectees turned up to build teamwork. My favorite part was finishing. We finished and we were singing the standard Navy cadence and we were singing it loud and proud and everybody finished together. Um, we all had a blast. The crowd was cheering us on. Our chiefs that had been training us were standing by us and it was awesome. 
As runners cross the finish line, the real winner of the day emerged. Community spirit and the celebration of family time. The military community is not the only one that benefits from the hard work of these sailors. CPO selectees living abroad also give back to the communities of their host nation. Improving a juvenile detention facility in the Naples area brings the future chiefs one step closer to reaching a milestone in their career. Air Force Sergeant Joseph Vigil shows us how they're making a difference while strengthening international ties. It was a clear, beautiful day on the island of Nisida as Naples area chief petty officer selectees got their hands a little dirty. Let me keep the shovel. Yeah. Senior Chief Cryptologic Technician Technical Albert Ondo was glad to build bonds with the future chiefs and influence the future of a few individuals. We're out here at the Nisida Juvenile Detention Center doing a community relations project. Uh, we're out here to help them out as well as provide some mentoring to the young men that are out here at the detention center. The project was aimed at clearing pathways for the youth to use as an area to grow their own food as well as a place to come for inspiration. The detention center's director, Gianluca Guida, said it was great working with the Navy again and looks forward to more projects like this. It's not the first year. They came out last year. And it's very great that they can get to know not just the, the children but the director and, and the people that work here can get to know a different culture and have that intermingling of different cultures. It's important to do these community relations projects because we rely on the community for support. I mean, without them, we wouldn't have places to live or even areas to operate and maintain. So it's good to give back to the community, show them that we care, and show them that we're willing to help out. Help out to improve the lives of those less fortunate. To me, that's very rewarding. It's, it's one of the better things you can do for somebody. I mean, it's us giving back to the Naples community from everything that they give us while we're here. And with some hard work and manual labor, the pathways will stay clear for another year. Air Force Sergeant Joseph Vigil, Nisida Island, Italy. The journey has been a long and grueling one, but all the pain, sweat, commitment, and dedication have finally paid off. The CPO transition comes to an end, and the newly selected Chief Petty Officers have something to celebrate. Petty Officer Dan Menudo brings us to the Chief Petty Officer pinning ceremony. On September 16th, 19 sailors in Naples ended a chapter in their lives and began writing a new one. Today is the greatest day in the Navy every year. It's a day where we get to welcome new Chief Petty Officers to our mess. I stand before you today and tell you that one of our strengths as a Navy is that group of individuals we repeatedly turn to uh, for their wisdom, their goodwill, their authority, and their technical expertise, the Chief Petty Officers. Guest speaker for the ceremony, Vice Admiral Harry Harris, knows the importance of the Chief Petty Officer, not just from relying on his chiefs as he came up through the officer ranks, but also from his father's days in the chief's mess. To the new chiefs, each of you is doing far more than simply pinning on anchors, changing your uniform, donning a new cover. Beyond these outward signs of transformation, you are internally transforming as well. You are accepting new responsibilities and new privileges, ones that no other service grants, and ones that have been part of our Navy for over 117 years. Petty Officer Dan Menudo, Naples, Italy. I'm Fleet Master Chief Brad LaVault. I have a message for the Navy's newest Chief Petty Officers. The Navy chose you for a reason. You now carry a greater responsibility and authority. Whether on board ship, downrange, or shore, more will be expected of you. Your mess is always there to help you with this. Use it. I look forward to meeting you as I travel about Europe and Africa. Congratulations and welcome to the mess. hoo Navy Chief. We hope you have enjoyed our coverage of the 2010 Chief Petty Officer induction, and we would like to congratulate all of our new chiefs. You can find all of these stories on our website at afnsouth.net and click on Naples. Thanks for watching.